Hey, how's it going guys? Ryan Gass here at PTPGun.com Firearms Training. And today I want to show you my new holster that I got for my SIG 325X Macro. Now, not only is it to fit this 325X Macro, but also with the Streamlight TLR7 mounted to it. Mounted is very easy. All right, I'm just going to put it on here. Now we're going to tighten down the set screw. Good. All right, I'll firm that up a little bit later with a quarter. But before I get any farther, I am so proud to show you all and introduce you all to Ryan Randolph Gass Jr. And this is my oldest daughter. She's been such a big help. We got home from the hospital last night with him, and she's been such a big help. You changed what? Two diapers? Three. Three? Wow. And you fed him for us, right? You're such a good big sister. I'm so proud of you. He came out 7 pounds, 15 ounces, and 20 inches and one quarter. So he, uh, happy and healthy, and that's all you can ever ask for. I guess it's good that I had introduced you to him because you may hear him from time to time in the background crying. Uh, so if you do, that's what it, that's what it is. Now it's time to have a down-to-earth conversation with you all. Yes, I did spend my hard-earned money on this. No, I did not get it sent to me for free, nor did I even get a discount for being an instructor or YouTuber at all. I spent my hard-earned money on it. I shopped around, decided what I wanted, uh, and yes, I spent $176.49 on this holster. This, to date, is the most expensive holster I've ever bought, and I hope that I get my money's worth out of it. And I will be letting you all know uh, through our videos over the next coming months uh, how I actually feel about it. Um, whether I would recommend that you spend your money on it. Now what we're seeing here is some of the paperwork that comes with the holster as well. Talk to you about uh, how to maintain it, uh, tips, tricks, and so on and so forth. Which we're going to go over here in this video. So now before we go any farther... Uh, I need to have my belt already on before I can actually start putting the holster on and making adjustments. So let's go and get that on. Now, so y'all can see better what I'm doing, how I'm doing. I'm going to take my hoodie off, and then when we have the holster back on and we're working on final adjustments and seeing how it conceals, I'll go ahead and put the hoodie back on at that time. Now, this is meant to be an appendix style holster where you carry it, it's going to be inside the waistline, right? Inside the waistline, and think of your body's a clock. Ahead of you is 12 o'clock, to your right is 3 o'clock, behind you is 6 o'clock, and to the left of you is 9 o'clock. Well, you want to have your holster in the 2 o'clock to uh, 10 o'clock range, uh, more specifically more towards the center, the 1 o'clock to 11 o'clock position. Now, while I'm not new to Pennix style holsters, I am new to this type of system, where it's called like a side cart system. It's kind of a two-part system. It's held together in one piece, but it is two pieces. You see here kind of this nylon string here that's kind of holding it together allows it a little bit of flex too so to make my uh putting on or the holster a little easier i'm going to go ahead and take the firearm and the magazine off at this point in time which they are both unloaded but just for ease of purpose i'm gonna go ahead and take this off all right so from here all right with my tucked in shirt all right i'm gonna bring this in and bring that clip up and over as you can see is what i'm doing what i'm doing I'm, I'm grabbing the clip with my middle finger and right, i'm pulling it open so that the, uh, the holster can go up and over it. And then when it sits in there, right, this really isn't honestly all that uncomfortable. Right? Um, I'm excited to see how it feels when I'm actually sitting down or in the vehicle or whatnot. Uh, but it actually doesn't feel too bad all that much right now. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and introduce the fireman in the holster to show you all. Chamber clear, magazine clear, magazine on the spare side clear. I'm going to go ahead and get this out of my hand. Get that inserted, right? Think of the trigger, right? Uh, you'll notice I got a little bit of a pudge here. So what I do is when I go and pull a uh, holster, I make sure I pull that pudge out of the way, and I can see clear down into my holster, and I safely put that firearm straight down in. All right? Now, this is how it's meant to be worn, all right? So let's go and see how it looks with a hoodie on.
Now, <clears throat> I will say, you see, you can already kind of tell how my belly pushes the top of the firearm out and pushes the bottom of the holster in the firearm into my groin area. So, let's go ahead and see how the tier one wedge system works and if it helps this problem, if it makes it more concealable. So with the wedge pack, it comes with four different sizes. We have extra large, large, then they also have a medium and also a small. And this is what will go onto the back of the holster in order to force the top of the holster in and the bottom of the holster out. So again, let's see a little bit of another side view. Let's see how they compare. All right. As you can tell, that uh, kind of the triangle comes deeper and uh, the wedge becomes wider. Now they're each about an inch thick from side to side as you're looking at it head on. But obviously from top to bottom, that's where they come from. So what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna use the medium. So now where I wanna place this at, once I have the, the tape taken off, I'm gonna put it probably about right there. Um, now with that being said, I have to take off the piece of that adherence uh, place it on there, and then I want to I want to apply some weight to that, uh, so I don't have to hold it. Uh, but it's got to be held in place probably for a couple minutes uh, to really give it a chance to adhere to the surface of the holster. Alright, so it's actually been an hour now. I'm going to go ahead and take this off. Alright, let's take a look. Looks like you could use some extra pressure right there. And maybe down here. Other than that, though, it looks like we made solid contact and it's adhered pretty, pretty well to it. Let's see how it fits now. All right, so let's go ahead and put this holster on. It is uh, a little bit of a task. It's kind of awkward. Yeah, I believe just like with anything, it'll get easier time. So uh, I'll be getting more and more practice here in the next uh, coming weeks. And I'll post update videos to let you know my experience with it. But now with the magazine, the spare magazine inserted into the holster and the gun itself, I do feel like it appears that the gun doesn't, doesn't stick out as much. Right? The wedge is doing its, its job. How much so is debatable. I don't think it's really... Uh, doing it uh, extremely well. Now, let's give a little credit where it's due. I only use the medium. There's also a large and a extra large above that, which I'm probably going to give this medium about a month, and then uh, I might swap it out for the large, and I'll give you updates from time to time. Now, as I post up-to-date videos, obviously, they're going to be shown up here on our YouTube. So if you haven't done so already, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Oh, you've already subscribed? Go ahead, turn the notifications bell on. And it'll be able to send you uh, alerts on your phone or on your computer, letting you know whenever we have new up-to-date videos for you as well. Also, do you yourself already have a Tier 1 holster? Or maybe do you have a similar side cart holster from a different company? What are your all's thoughts? What could I be doing better to get a better and more enjoyable experience out of this holster? Uh... Are there other holster companies that make the same exact thing, but for a more uh, cost-effective price? I'd like to hear from you all. You all are where I also learn from as well. All right? I don't know everything. It's a learning journey for me, just like it is for everybody else. So let us know in the comments below what your thoughts are, if you have uh, differing opinions. If there's something that I'm not maybe thinking about. Now, something to also consider is, is it actually comfortable also when you're sitting down? Whether in like an office style chair or in a living room on a sofa or, or whatnot, uh, maybe while driving too, because uh, that's going to play effect too. You know, is it comfortable during those things as well? Because it ain't leaving your body. You has to you know stay in its position, and it's going to be there while you're doing your daily functions. So that's something you need to consider as well. And as you can see here, it wasn't. Uh, I wouldn't say it was crazy uncomfortable. It was. I could tell it was there, obviously. I wasn't going to be able to take a nap and stuff, but it definitely worked for what I was doing. What do you all think? Put it in the comments below.